So someone in your life is getting into bass fishing and you just don't know what lures to purchase for them. You know, walking down the tackle aisles, there are so many options, it can get so confusing. And so in this video, I'm gonna explain what items every angler needs in their very first tackle box and stay tuned to the end for an awesome giveaway. My name's Tyler and let's talk about it. How's it going everybody and welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. My goal here on this channel is to help you guys become better bass anglers and catch more fish. Now like I said, the buying process can get very, very complicated and overwhelming when you go to the tackle shop, but I still think shopping in person is the way to go, especially when building your angler's first tackle box. So today we're at the Academy Sports and Outdoors here in Frisco, Texas. I say we grab our cart and we start talking about how to build the first tackle box. When building your angler's first tackle box, you're gonna need exactly what it suggests you're gonna need a tackle box. Now this one here is what we all had growing up as kids, the old fashioned tackle box. This is no longer the tackle box that is most efficient for bass anglers, especially ones that are hopping between bank fishing, kayak fishing, and bass boat fishing. The one you're gonna want is right over here. Follow me. You're gonna want a standard 3,700 sized tackle box. The 3700 size box, in my opinion, really is the most versatile tackle box out there. But there's one more thing we need to hold our soft plastic lures, which we're gonna shop for here in a second, and that is some kind of soft plastic bag. Now the reasoning for needing a tackle box and a tackle bag is because soft plastic lures come in their own individual bags, which you can choose to leave them in there or take them out and place in individual bags like this. And if you just leave them out and about, soft plastics get thrown everywhere in your backpack, they end up on the shore, you're gonna lose some. So having soft plastics, all your colors, your styles, your, your sizes in one bag like this is definitely helpful. And so now that we have our tackle box and our tackle bag, we're gonna stick them in our box and start shopping for lures. So the first lure that I believe every angler should definitely know how to throw and have quite a few of is soft plastic, specifically a soft plastic worm. And there's so many colors out there. I know that when you're shopping for tackle, especially if you've never bass fished before, or you're shopping for somebody that is just starting and you think, well, this one's green, this one's bright green, this one's dark blue, which one's gonna work best? Well, it all depends on your water clarity. So if your angler is gonna fish in a body of water with really, really dirty water, you want colors that are on either end of the spectrum. So super dark colors, black and blues, or super bright colors. Chartreuse, uh, bright orange, bright green, bright yellow. Those types of lures are what you want in dirty water. So we're gonna pick up one pack of worms here. This is a Strike King Ocho. It is a, a stick bait, which is a really, really versatile lure. Uh, I highly recommend this one in a black color. And then this one here is a watermelon red, any sort of like watermelon green, green pumpkin, or your natural colors, that's for your more clear water fisheries. Anything clear, like I said, natural colors, anything dirty water, you're gonna have colors on either side of the spectrum. So I'm gonna get two packs of those. Then you're gonna want something that imitates a bait fish. So I'm talking uh, maybe a bluegill, minnows, uh, gizzard shad, any kind of bait fish you have in your lake or pond. And I don't think there's a better lure for that for any angler. I mean, I've been fishing for almost my entire life and this is still one of my favorite lures that it has been since I started. That is the Strike King Caffeine Shad. It is a soft plastic jerk bait and really any color works in this. Like I said, if you're going for bait fish, eating bass, you're gonna wanna go in a white, pearl, translucent type color. And if you're going for fish that are eating bluegills or really any bass out there are going to eat a watermelon red or a green pumpkin. So those two soft plastics are really helpful to have as an angler. And then for those bass that might be chilling a little bit out deeper, maybe you want a bigger meal, a bigger profile, you want a creature bait. A creature bait is known as a, a lure that has a little bit bulkier of a profile might have more appendages, more arms sticking out, and in my opinion, the Strike King Rage Bug is an amazing lure for that. And again, the same color rules apply for all these lures, you know, natural colors in clear water and black and blues, crazy colors in that dirty water. So now that we have five or six packs of soft plastics, like I said, your traditional worms, your stick baits, your soft plastic jerk bait, and your creature baits, I say it's time to move on to hard baits. So now that we have some soft plastic lures which are designed to be fished closer to the bottom, uh, we're gonna get some reaction style lures which as the name implies, they're supposed to elicit a reaction strike from those bass as they are reeled in the water column, uh, getting those fish to chase it down and eat it. And in my experience, there's no better lure than a spinner bait for that. No matter your skill level, you can go anywhere in the country, any style of body of water and catch fish on a spinner bait. Now when it comes to weights and colors and sizes, 
3 8 ounce is my favorite for all sorts of, of pond fishing and lake fishing out there. And the same color rules apply. So if you're fishing in dirtier water, you're gonna want maybe a chartreuse spinnerbait with maybe a red blade, red hook, some red on it. I love red on a spinnerbait. And then when it comes to clear water, something that imitates a bait fish because a spinnerbait is a great bait fish imitation lure. And so any kind of white, gray, smoky colors, that is my favorite. And just for good time's sake, let's pick up two of each one because I have a habit of losing spinnerbaits. Now staying in the same vein of reaction lures, crankbaits are an age old way to catch fish no matter where you live in the country. And really no matter what style or species of fish you're going for, but of course we're talking about bass today. But the problem with crankbaits is that as you can see from right here, they are an open hook style lure. These, most crankbaits out there have two treble hooks on them, which is a, a, a three pronged hook. And so when you're reeling this along the bottom, it is very easy, especially for newer anglers who might not know what's down there in their bodies of water, it's very easy to lose these lures because the hooks get snagged and you have to end up breaking your line. And so if you're buying lures for somebody's first tackle box, of course you don't want them to lose their lures right away. It's, it's gonna be a waste of time and money. So if your angler is fishing in a location that has tons of potential snags down there on the bottom, a crankbait is not going to be a great first tackle box lure. But if you're fishing in an open area with gravel and very clear water, you can see there's nothing to get snagged on, a crankbait is a great lure to add. And so here are the two that you want to check out. The square bow crankbait is one of my favorite crankbaits because it only dives to a certain depth range. So this one right here, the KVD 1.5, one of the best square bills ever made, only dives to about three to five feet deep. And that is perfect for your average farm pond, neighborhood pond, shallow body of water. But if you're fishing anything deeper than that three to five feet, you want to be throwing a crankbait that can cover water in that depth zone where the fish are living. And so the lipless crankbait, this here is a Strike King Red Eye Shad. Again, half ounce for this one is perfect. And then of course the, the square bills don't really come in any different weights. But the, the, the lipless crankbait is perfect for catching fish in those deeper water depths. Colors when it comes to crankbaits. In my experience, most of the time I'm throwing a shad or some sort of white or gray variation because I'm imitating a bait fish. So pick up one or two of these for your angler and let's keep going. So now our tackle box has bottom lures, reaction or in the water column lures. Now it's time to talk about top water. And in my experience for a beginner angler, first tackle box, there's nothing better than a top water popper. Popper is great because it usually weighs a decent amount, so you can cast it far out there, and it doesn't really take a whole lot of skill to work back and, of course, catch fish. All you gotta do is give it little tiny tugs, and that, that popper will make the, the sound, as the name implies, a little pop or a little bloop noise as it goes across the top of the water. Bass cannot resist it, and I just think uh, a beginner angler should have one or two poppers in their tackle box. But if you wanna make this tackle box really cool, one of my favorite lures that catches fish all around the country is this funky one called the Whopper Plopper. And the great thing about this lure is that you cast it out there, weighs about the same as the top water popper, but it has a completely different action, completely different sound, and it triggers bites from big bass all around the country by just reeling it straight back in. This tail right here makes, honestly, topwaters have very uh, strategic names. Popper makes a pop noise, plopper makes a plop noise. Pop, 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 pop. And I'm telling you, this catches big bass right here. It is a little more expensive of a lure, $14.99 for one lure, so tell the person you're buying this for not to throw it around any trees, but I'm telling you, this is a great lure to add to a first tackle box. Now, one thing I'm realizing we did not touch on is the fact that we need hooks and weights to go along with our soft plastic lures, otherwise, we're not gonna be able to hook any of these fish. And in my experience, there is no better hook out there than a value pack of three aught wide gap worm hooks. There are tons of different hooks out there, but I really think a wide gap worm hook fits the best with all the soft plastics we already have in our cart. And three aught, three slash zero, the sizes can get confusing, so three aught is the best hook size to fit all the ones we got in here. Let's talk about weights. Now, as we stand here in front of all the weights, there are so many different sizes and options, but really there's only two main metal types that make up our weights for worms. We have tungsten and lead. Tungsten weights are really great because you, it allows you to feel the bottom more. Uh, they are, of course, a smaller form factor because tungsten is a more dense metal. But the problem is they're more expensive and they usually come in smaller packs. Even the bulk packs are more expensive than lead and that is by far. And so if you're buying uh, hooks and weights for a new angler, you don't need tungsten weights. Save that for when they get a lot more experience in bass fishing. I say we move down here to the bottom and we pick up some regular lead slip weights. Right here we got eighth ounce is my favorite all around versatile size of weight. 
and quarter ounce. Eighth ounce is what I'm gonna use the majority of the time fishing in anything less than eight feet of water. But if you're fishing a soft plastic worm or a creature bait or that soft plastic jerk bait, anywhere deeper than eight feet, I would go ahead and put on the quarter ounce weight. So go ahead and grab, it is $1.19 for each of these. Go ahead and grab two packs of each one, two packs of eighth ounce and two packs of quarter ounce, and you are ready to catch some fish. Our tackle box is almost complete, but there's two more necessities every angler needs. The first of which being a pair of pliers to safely remove hooks from the fish's mouth. And the second of which, and really almost the most important thing in this entire box for me, is a good quality line cutter. As a matter of fact, make it two of them. Whether it's this boomerang tool right here or a nice pair of sharp scissors, you need something for your angler to be able to cut their line, whether it's monofilament, fluorocarbon line, or braided line. That way, and trust me, your dentist is gonna thank you, they're not biting the line with their teeth. Our tackle box shopping is complete. It's time for us to check out. And like I mentioned before, I'm gonna be giving away this entire tackle box and bag and all the lures inside. But the only way to win is by being subscribed to my channel right here, so click that subscribe button. And also commenting down below who you're going to give this fishing stuff to if you win. I'm talking about your grandson, granddaughter, your son or daughter, or it could be a coworker at work who you wanna teach how to catch bass for the first time. All this stuff will definitely help them in the pursuit of that. But before we give it away, I'm actually gonna take these lures or duplicates of them from my own collection, and I'm gonna show you guys how to fish every Every single one of the lures in this box and this bag that way if you purchase this first tackle box for the angler in your life they're not confused as to how to catch fish on these lures that video is going to be out very soon and I will have a link right up here in the corner when it's finished so make sure you click on that video like I said it corresponds perfectly with the lures that are in this box in this bag my name is Tyler and we'll see you guys in the next episode right here on Tyler's Real Fishing <laughs>